Johnson University was founded in 1893 by Ashley and Emma Johnson. Created as a school to train and equip evangelists, the Johnsons were devoted to take in any young man who desired to preach the gospel of Christ. Since that time, the Johnsons' original vision has stayed in place, as the campus itself has evolved and changed. The Johnsons' vision in 1893 was the cover page, and chapter after chapter has been added through the years. Everyone who has since graced Johnson's halls, students, faculty, and staff, have all contributed to a new chapter. What is your role in the story of Johnson? The Johnsons uh, explicitly patterned the School of the Evangelists and then Johnson uh, after Bethany College, which was founded in 1840 by Alexander Campbell. And it was a unique combination between a strong grounding in the arts and sciences and in Bible and theology. In fact, the early curriculum, the earliest curriculum, was entirely uh, about half or more than half, actually, of arts and sciences courses and uh, the rest Bible and theology courses. So that's quite unlike most uh, Bible colleges today. We think of our curriculum in three different divisions, and that is the, the Word, the World, and the Work. And of course the Word is Bible and theology. The World uh, is arts and sciences, uh, and the creative arts especially. And then the Work is how we take those first two, the Word and World, into the work of uh, extending the kingdom of God among all nations. So it's that tripartite division with a strong emphasis now on each of those three uh, that makes us unique. So I'm a graduate of Johnson. I uh, came here in order to participate in that mission. I came back here when I finished my graduate work at Indiana University, or at least finished my residency, to teach. Uh, and uh, this is my 50th year now after doing that. So this is my third time uh, that I have come back to the school, this time as president. It sort of bookends my academic career to begin with and, and to end with uh, at this place. I share very strongly the mission and am happy to participate in uh, this way in the last now 11 years. The board has asked me to consider uh, staying connected in some way uh, with the school, and I'm open to that. Uh, if so, I will work at the pleasure of the president. When I came here, we were right at the beginning of another cycle of accreditation, and one of the major functions of that 10-year cycle is to review the mission of the school. And so we began that process. It took three years to to complete that process. But it was at the end of three years that we articulated that mission that I just quoted a moment ago. That was a tipping point for us because that allowed us then to think about what we called in the mission statement strategic vocations framed by the Great Commission. Uh, that is not any vocation, but it needed to be a vocation that was framed by the Great Commission, a strategic vocation that was framed by the Great Commission. And by strategic, we meant a vocation that opened up to our graduates a population of people not otherwise easily accessible to our graduates. So that could be public school teaching, or that could be nonprofit management, or as we've come to understand now, business uh, management, or as we've come to understand now, we're working with Chinese students, which is a quite uh, different way of thinking about how our mission can be expanded uh, to uh, take the gospel to the whole world. Uh, we have uh, added uh, around 21 new academic majors uh, in the last uh, seven or eight years, and uh, that has been an occasion for the growth of our numbers too. We added a, another campus because we were approached by that other campus to uh, consider acquiring it. 
It's a long process. We had just been involved in a, an 11 month discussion with another institution who also approached us about a merger acquisition. That did not end in a merger acquisition. And three years later, uh, three months later rather, we were approached by uh, Florida Christian College to consider uh, a merger acquisition with them. Initially, I was reluctant because we had spent 11 months and, and had really put our own strategic planning on hold during that time. I, I was skeptical that we had the capacity to do that again after three months of an interval, but uh, the board of Florida Christian College and our board discussed uh, the prospects together and we decided to pursue it and of course it, it happened in rather a rather short time, within, within a six months period essentially. I think uh, a new articulation of our mission that fits the contemporary world uh, and yet at the same time is true to the original purpose of Johnson, I think that's, uh, that's what I will take away. It's difficult, it's, it's a fine line of, of being contemporary and recognizing that we live in a different world now on the one hand and on the other hand being true, being missional in what we do. Uh, we cannot be all things to all people. We are not a comprehensive university. Uh, we can't have every major. We can't have every vocation represented. We're not motivated so much by the cultural mandate of Genesis or by the mandate of Paul to Timothy to hold fast to pure doctrine, the doctrinal mandate, I called it, but rather the Great Commission mandate to take the gospel to the whole world. So we have to discriminate, and we discriminate by saying we want strategic vocations that are framed by the Great Commission. So not only did the rearticulation of the mission open the door for us to add things, but it also uh, was the means of considering things that perhaps needed to be changed or removed. And we became convinced after a lot of discussion that our name became, had become a barrier to our mission at uh, Johnson Bible College. For one thing, we had added a number of graduate programs, including a PhD program that did not really seem to fit a college uh, descriptor as opposed to a university description. And we had become convinced uh, that Bible in the name uh, had become a barrier. Now that's not Bible or theology in the curriculum. We haven't changed our curriculum. We haven't changed the requirements of Bible and theology at all. But at the time, there were over 1,100 Bible colleges in America. Uh, about 125 of those were accredited by the association that accredits Bible colleges. About 25 of those 1,100 had regional accreditation and Johnson was one of those. So when most people in 2010 uh, heard the word Bible College, they did not think of the kind of school that we are with the kind of mission that we have, with the kind of resources, with the qualifications of the faculty we have. So it didn't really communicate in the 21st century what Bible College communicated in 1893 or in 1909 when the name was changed to Bible College. Johnson was the first college in America to be called Bible College. There were Bible Institutes and other schools that had a strong Bible emphasis, but we were the first one to have that name, Bible College. So it didn't really pigeonhole us in any particular higher education category then. We explain the mission of the school by saying we prepare students for Christian ministries and other strategic vocations framed by the Great Commission in order to extend the kingdom of God among all nations. That's the historic mission of Johnson. It's stated in different words, but from the very beginning, Ashley and Emma Johnson had that very design in mind. In fact, uh, he, he used the phrase uh, that, that the gospel would take the, take the world, 
rather than take the gospel to the world. He be believes so strongly in the power of the gospel to take the world. Uh, and so we really are just extending his idea of why he wanted to uh, see Johnson University established, School of the Evangelist as it was called in uh, the earliest day. He was always open, it seemed, to new ways of understanding, experiencing and understanding the mission uh, that he started here. So I think he would be pleased by uh, how we have embraced uh, new ways of accomplishing the mission that he set out to do.